And while the human influence decreases and the rays increases, the lower you get in these bases. Dreamland was built in the Mojave Desert near or in a place called Yucca. Today is a part of Area 51. They're all connected with underground tunnels. More UFO sightings and incidents occur in the Mojave Desert of California than any other place in the world. So many, in fact, that no one even bothers to make reports. Anyone who ventures into the desert to talk to the residents will be uh, surprised to find out that none of them consider UFOs anything but normal in the area. And another thing about this is who is in control of uh, these bases. And, you know, right now I just want to back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about the Four Corners area, which is Dulce Base. It's a seven-level subterranean base. It's located underneath the Arcalada Mesa. There's a a mountain there, Arcalada. It's in southwest New Mexico. It's about the size of uh, Manhattan. Energy frequency people have gone up there and taken energy frequency readings. Say it produces the same amount of energy as the city of... uh, Manhattan. That's a couple million, probably about 10 million, a couple, you know, at least five, four million just in Manhattan. These bases are huge. And they have underground vehicles that you can drive while you're in them. They have their own subterranean shuttle systems. Uh, you know, I'm going to go into more of this later. They have townhomes, condos. When you live in these bases, you pretty much stay in them instead of coming up to the surface all the time. They have condos. They have gyms. They have movie theaters. They have saunas. They have everything that you would have on top of the earth on these underground bases. Now, who's in charge of all this? The Department of Navy is a small, clandestine agency with the United States government, which is staffed primarily by individuals recruited and trained by other elements of the federal government. It's the Department of Navy that is in control of all of the, basically in control of all the intelligence about these bases. It is funded and compartmentalized, which means not too many know it exists. And when you hear the, the term Department of Navy, you automatically consider it to be one of the military bases or the military agency itself, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, has nothing to do with that type of Navy. It's just a name to, you know, confuse people. Uh, despite its name, Department of Navy has very little to do with the actual United States Navy. Its existence is known only by an extremely limited number of individuals, and its actual mission is known by an even smaller number. The P- Department of Navy's purpose is to direct extraordinary, unique activities in relation to aliens and their technologies, uh, with the purposes of keeping them silent, keeping them covered up. And, you know, in the, in the Bible codes, and I looked under chemtrails because I had done chemtrails uh, last year or two. One of the first codes I ever did was on chemtrails. It had said uh, the chemtrails were being operated by the Department of Navy. And their budget was coming from the Oval Office itself. And at that time, I was thinking, well, what's the Navy doing with chemtrails? But to learn about this other Department of <laughs> Navy agency, it's really a super secret agency created by the government, elected by them. They're not exactly any officers from the Department of Navy itself. Uh, you can see this is all a, a big, a big octopus, a big network of, of secret groups, secret organizations, everything running parallel with the elected form of government. In fact, today, there's two different factions in America today. There's uh, the military corporate complex, which is a huge faction here, and then there's the elected government officials with the patriots and the constitutionalists of America. So we're kind of dividing right in half, but right now what's happening is the ones that have been in power since Eisenhower, minus Kennedy, because Kennedy wanted to come out with disclosure, tell people what was going on. He wanted to disband the CIA, and so they killed him. And every president since then has been a part of the cover-up, has been a part of keeping aliens covered up in this country, keeping the problem covered up. And they do so through their shadow government. They have their own military. They have their own ways of funding things. Uh, the, the military corporate complex is huge. And most people today, when you hear about it, you wouldn't realize that it's all, it's all wrapped up in this new world order. And that's what's running the new world order is this military corporate complex. And it runs alongside and behind the real order of America, which, which America is supposed to be, which is elected government officials. And, and a government run by the people, of the people, and for the people, instead of government that wants to stick it to the people. And that's basically what we have now. And, you know, I, I hate to tell the Christians out there who are getting so excited that the Republican candidate is leading in the polls. Uh, the Bushes are not Christians. Look at the fruits. Look at the fruits. When you get into two seconds of research of this New World Order, you can't get anywhere without running into the Bushes. And I'm sorry to say, but they have taken so many contracts and loyalty oaths to Satan and Lucifer and secret societies and oaths that they're in. There is no possible way that they can could, they could sit there and they claim they're a Christian, and most Christians could just sit and believe it. I mean, I know they do. It's disgusting. It's sick. It's maddening. <laughs> so, 
So what we need to do, basically, is first figure out who these aliens are and what we can do about it. And we know they're here. I mean, this is just a blast from the past. I'm just telling you about the meeting at uh, Edwards Air Force Base. It started with Holloman. They met with these aliens, and they've always they've always shown us in the movies what they're doing. If you pay attention, look at every movie that comes out because they're trying to tell you something. And and this one was uh, close enc- close encounters of the third kind. It makes you almost want to run out and get the movie and watch it again because this was based on actual events. A lot of these movies that are coming out, there's a little bit of fiction to them, but there's always truth to them as well. It's mixed up. So if you if you look through the movie and, and get by the storylines and look at the information that's being presented, usually the storyline itself is the one that has the most truth to it. Not exactly the fictional characters. Fallen angels are are nothing but, you know, these angels are nothing but fallen angels. And what happened was when Lucifer rebelled against the Most High, he had control of several planets at that time as a very high-ranking archangel. And the Lord kicked him out of heaven. He lost his looks. Uh, he was judged. He even lost his home planet. It was, it was bliter- you know, it was obliterated and cast out of the solar system, which is coming black now as Planet X. Uh, the planet was known as Rahab. There's an asteroid belt between Ju- Jar- uh, Jupiter and Mars. You know, ask me where that came from. <laughs> and another thing is that at, at the time, Earth was a thriving angelic civilization. You've heard of Atlantis. You've heard of Lemuria. If you haven't heard of Lemuria on the West Coast, you've heard of Atlantis that was uh, uh, located right off of Florida. Uh, some people, some countries will tell you, well, it was located off of France. It was located off of Cuba. Atlantis was right. There was a... a it was all one piece of land there before. I bet Cuba, even back then, was probably a part of the United States because it was probably hooked up to Atlantis. It was hooked up to the Florida there. It's right there somewhere. Atlantis is right there off the coast of Florida. Anyway, these these, these angelic civilizations were thriving. They had inter, interplanetary travel. They did this by the UFOs back then. They weren't limited to just one planet. But what happened was when they when they when God judged the Earth for the Satan's rebellion, uh, they were forced to go underground to survive he judged all of these planets with hailstones of fire and it destroyed all of the all of these planets and all of these uh, beings that were judged and lost their angelic looks became you know were forced to go in, in underground and so one of the biggest problems with the government today is the fact that selling the extraterrestrial lie to the public because they know full well that these aliens are not from galaxies millions and millions of miles away these aliens and their ufos are coming right from underneath our own surface on earth these aliens have bases all over the all over the world. When they when they dug out Dulce and they put seven levels, what they didn't realize was that they were building on top of already an existing alien base. And so the you know the humans really five seven five, the fifth sixth and seventh levels of Dulce are alien alien housing alien levels. No humans are allowed near them, although some have been taken to them. And we have reports of what they saw on those levels, uh, but. <laughs> The first four levels are basically maintenance and, and government offices, a uh, very tightly secured area. And the thing is about it is these UFOs are coming from the earth and the water. They have bases under the water. They have bases under the earth. They're not, you know, there, there are star systems and planets and stars where they, they will fly in from with UFOs. But they're not extraterrestrial. They're subterranean, and they're right here in our own solar system. They're not going anywhere. And so... You know, if, if, the, if, the, if the government had headed to the Bible, instead of looking into fear and, and creating more agencies and setting up a lie, I don't think Eisenhower understood the implications of his actions back in 1954 when he created all this whole shadow government. That's basically what he did, was he was the one who created this whole shadow government that is now turning around in these last days that's going to destroy the Christians. And they're quoting scripture while they're doing it, because the highest offices in land are a whole part of the shadow government. If you look back into the, the races that are now fighting for control of America, you have the Greys, the Reptilians, and the Draconians. Those are the three most dominant races. I know there's a lot of different races out there, and I'm not really going to get into them. You can really get messed up on where they are and what star systems. And, you know, it's not my intent to inform, you know, get into the where they are and, and what they look like. The most important thing we need to know is, is exactly how it's going to affect us. Because, you know... I'll do it after break. Steve's going to go on break here. When we come back, I'm going to talk about it some more. I'm going to get us some more information. This is the Reality Radio Network on Telstar 5 Transponders 5 and on the Internet at realityradionetwork.com. 